Okay, okay. So, so Doug, we're gonna get her rolling, oh, okay? Be Bring that, have actually, Aaron. We'll there. set it right here so I can just set oh, him down and into it, right? Yeah. Yep. I'm gonna actually do a couple yeah, yeah. trial runs here, putting them in it yeah, from right up here. We'll use this car, yeah, 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 yeah. So we can do it quick. Up, up. Yeah. Can you just shut that? Yeah. You stay in. You just up. shut it. Oh, yeah. Don't. Get up. Up, up. Oh. There we go. And go in. Phone number? Yeah. Up, up. Eight, oh, yeah. 855 is 529 8826. And long distance is 1506, play to 529. I don't know, Brazil, somewhere. We're all across Canada. Oh, by the way, we're all across Canada, guys. My daughter watches in Toronto. Uh, Sarah to her. Up, up. Huh? Say Toronto. Yeah. Say to her. Come on. Sarah to I, can't, I won't say her name, but I'll say, yeah, yeah. if you're up. in Toronto, in, in He's being stubborn. somewhere, yeah, call 855. Don't want to stay in. <laughs> In you go. There you go. See? That's all you got to do. And then he's out of the shot that way, and then you can bring over or grab him. So he seems to go down, no problem. Come on. I should have what? Brought your frog. <laughs> you got a, you, Florence, you got a frog? I got With my... all of these around here, you got a frog? Yeah. No. A lovely meal for it all. Oh, I guess. <laughs> I had a Pac Man frog, but he passed away last week. He's about 12 years old. They don't live that long. Have you ever had a budget squirrel? Nope. I they had. Are, they uh, are effed up looking frogs. I've had a dart frog. I've had some uh, Amazon milk frogs. But never had those ones. I'm lucky I didn't bring my tarantulas. Uh, I have the world. I, shit. I have two of the world's. Damn. I have two of the world's most <laughs> venomous <laughs> tarantulas. Oh. You know we need a part two go there. get them. Go get them. God. <laughs> I can make it no, that no, so, no, no, we can't. It's no, too late. That one thing I will never touch. What? It's tarantula. Yeah, think. I don't touch my 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 highly venomous one. I've got a couple that aren't that venomous that I'll handle, but my my venom my really really venomous one I won't handle. It won't kill you. You can't be killed by any tarantula, but it will still cause like nerve damage for up to four years and a lot of pain for four years. Oh well, heck. I held my baby one, but I won't hold my big one, my full grown one. No way. It's my wife's biggest fear is my tarantulas. She'll hold the snakes, anything I own, but she won't even look at my tarantulas. Can't really say I blame her. Yeah. <laughs> I don't blame her one little bit. Never, I was never allowed to have them when I was in my home. Once I get out of the house, the wife's like, okay, you can have Florence, your tarantulas. I know I ask you this. I look over there, don't I? Yes. I just keep... Where's the phone number? 529-8826. I will, I will go in the room and you need to do that. Right, I will so, say yeah. the phone number. Yeah. So I can't remember, where should I look? Yeah, like you are saying. Me. You. Yeah, okay. you look right at me. Good. Remember, we're having a couple of beer. You and Rocky and I are having a couple of beer. Mm, vodka? Yeah, I know, I know. It's Rocky Rocky would really try to steal it. Would he get drunk over there? Oh, yeah, he would kill him quick. That's why with them, you got to be real careful what you leave laying around because they have so much, so little blood in their system that any kind of toxicant will easily intoxicate them. So we're real careful, aren't we? No, you can't clean my teeth on TV. <laughs> yes, you can. Do it. There. Yeah. Fruitcake, aren't you? Aren't you? Oh, I just saw Steve. Oh, yeah, and that's what he's trying to do. He wants What's to he you. trying to do? When you see him going like that, yeah. he's, he thinks I'm his mate, so he's trying to regurgitate his seeds and give me his seeds. Oh. They only do that with their mate. I've had friends message me with their birds. They're like, why is my bird doing this? Like, because he's got a crush on you. Has, has Rocky got a crush on you? Pretty well. He thinks I'm his girlfriend. They bond, right? But they only bond and mate with one, one their whole life. You have to mate with Rocky. No, no, thank God. Oh, okay. But he, he honestly, even though he, that, where he doesn't have a female mate, he, he signifies me as his mate. Oh, okay. So that's why he's glued to me. And if he flies, he won't land on anybody but me. Okay, I know. I yeah, know. It's, it's annoying. James has said, "Stop asking him so many questions." <laughs> <laughs> you remember this stuff. Oh, you can re ask me. Okay, yeah. uh, we'll start off with you. How in the world did you ever get into Where are you from? Right here. Born and raised, St. Stephen. Really? Moved out west for, what, three or four years? And yeah. Got sick with a blood disorder out there I didn't know I have. Came back here for medical, met my wife. And never here you left. are. Never left. And then we kind of started, like, we do a lot of community stuff because I don't know. If, 
we should cheat the illusion, boys. Just get yourself this way a little bit more. Yep. And, uh, that means the camera's going to have to. Come this yeah, way. buddy. Okay, Florence. Oh, yeah, yeah. What's that? He was better over there. That we just going to see the door, door hinges. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'm just trying to get them to. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't get to see the. Okay. Well, if I zoom in enough, we don't see. Them. We want to see the. Just, just throw me around, guys. Yeah. Just throw me around. You know. <laughs> it was all set up. Sorry. No, well, it just wasn't tight. Yeah. Uh, four feet looks like six feet on TV, so that's all right. Yes, it looks like. Pardon? Your last name Harper? Yep. Okay. <laughs> no relation to Stephen. <laughs> oh, Doug. But that's one thing I always say, don't say anything about politics. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. She said it's 133 for the high definition channel. must be 133 and 239 must be like the regular definition. It's it's uh, 26 on Bell, right? One five five thirty nine on Bell satellite. Okay, we okay? Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll the the we'll just twist the, the chair. A bit. Yeah. Which way? Just which way? Sorry. Yep. You put me wherever you want me. Try right there. Yeah. That works. The lighting the lights down. On yeah, yeah. Oh, it looks good because there's little. That stuff. still works. Gonna work. Yeah. What's the channels, Patrick? You, they're wondering what the channels are. Um, satellite 539, 526, and Rogers 126. 126. Paul, put that on my post there. They were a couple people were wondering. Rogers 126. And Rogers Ignite customers are on a different channel again. 133. One, that's right. And Bell's on 26. 26. That's right. And Rogers yeah. just likes. I know. I we, we know. What? It's harder to find when you don't you go to my wall. Three on my wall. I see that. Three minutes, guys. Cool. Ready, Rock? Okay, Florence. We leave all these lights on, right? Yeah. Yep. Sit there and do that all the time, aren't you? Try to give me seeds. I'm listening to them. Oh, back there. I'm listening to them. <laughs> yeah, that's what this is all. Where's about. my ear? That's not fair. Yeah, I know. I don't get no guidance. I'm just winging it. <clears throat> Bell's 26, and yeah. Promo comes up? Yeah. Okay, we're going to see it on there. Okay. That means we're going. Good, good. Okay, buddy. You're the one. Yeah, you're the one. You're going to be the star, Rocky. He is. And that's what everybody said. I was like on my Facebook, who should I take? And everybody's like, you make sure you take Rocky. Yeah. Does he need more? No, he should be good. I'm going to give him one throughout the show just to make people laugh. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> Every time I take one, wet my whistle, I'll give him one. SunburyShores.org Warmest wishes for a happy holiday season. Merry Christmas from the Kennedy Inn in Shiretown Pub, a seaside inn with old world charm located in downtown St. Andrews by the sea.
wishing you all the happiness the holidays can bring. Season's greetings from the Huntsman Marine Science Center. Explore, learn, and discover at the Fundy Discovery Aquarium. May your holidays sparkle with joy and love. Merry Christmas from Fillmore Heating and Cooling, serving both residential and commercial customers, air conditioning, ventilation, and propane. May the magic of Christmas fill every corner of your heart and home. Happy Holidays from WWE Smith's Country Store on Highway 3 in the heart of the village of Harvey. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. New Brunswick Independent Television. CHCO TV Channel 26. Hello from our jungle studio on 24 Reed Avenue. This is John Higgins live on CHCO TV. I'm John Higgins. It is so good to be here. We're back in the yellow again. It's really good to be here. Special guest tonight. We have a whole crew. <laughs> I've had a chance to meet them. I want to introduce you first to Doug Harper. And with Doug, we have Rocky. Is high rock? Probably not. Now, Doug, Doug, as he raises exotic animals. If that's what you want to say, yeah. We raise, rescue, rehabilitate, and rehome what we can. But, Doug, not your dog and your cat. No, you, we no, usually no. take care of the ones that everybody else stays away from. That's got about fear or they're big I, I'd, be, I'd be one of those ones exactly that would stay away and from. i used yeah. to be as well i used to be one of my biggest fears used to be snakes. oh good you got these guys and you're afraid of them yeah i was terrified of my big first guy that's sitting over there when we got him my wife was the only one that really wanted to touch him and it just took me a while to get educated and <laughs> hang on hang on everybody we're going to introduce you to the big guy a little later on i can hardly wait all right so but yeah we uh how we did just, you get into this how, uh, well, well it started about it's been, what, almost 10 years with the, we started out doing, uh, just someone dropped off a red tail boa cache, the one that's over there. And uh, like I said, it just increased over after that. People knew that I'd taken an animal that was sick or that they couldn't keep anymore. And then it went from one to now we have close to 200, 250 animals at any given time that we take care of. And You do? Yeah, yeah. Between my home and my store, my uh, pet store, we have just, like I said, a little under 300 animals at any given time. Holy cow. Yeah, it's it's a No, not your typical animals. No. No, no not no, your typical no. ones. Nope. And like I said we at one point in time we had more animals at our facility than some of the zoos in the province. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. Are you fr you're from here? Yeah, born and raised. I was here, lived here my whole life, graduated St. Stephen High School and then I uh worked here for a little bit and then I headed out west for a while and ended up uh Realizing I had a health issue, I had to come home and take care of, and came home, met my wife, and here we are. Oh, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> simply, simply unbelievable. It's, I just want to let everybody know at home that we have 15 guests that we're going to be bringing on the show today. As we bring them on, I'll probably move further and further away now. <laughs> With Doug is Aaron, and uh, Aaron is a handler. He works with you. So Aaron is used to these yep, guests. Yep, I have a, a limited amount of people that help me out with my shows. That I I've, can certainly see why. And it's not just because of their fears. It's 
I have to have confidence in my people that do my shows with me because there's a lot of kids involved. I have to have somebody I know that knows my animals, knows their behaviorals, know their personalities. Because every one of these guys have signs that can tell you if they're stressed out. And you just can't have anybody come in and, and help you with these shows. Some of them you don't want to get too stressed out. No, they don't. No, but exactly. most of my animals, any animals I use for my shows and stuff to, with the kids have all been handled by over 20,000 kids now. I've done over 400, 400 birthday parties and special events with campgrounds, hotels, and So you'll just, take these guys to a house, to somebody's yeah, birthday yeah, party? Yeah, I do a lot of schools too as well. I do a lot of educational events at schools around the province, and we go right to people's living rooms sometimes to do the, the birthday parties right there for them. We have a room at our store. We host them there as well, but because of the virus right now, we, we've kind of shut that part down for the last seven or eight months, which which is kind of a, that's how we feed these guys is those shows. So it's been kind of a, a kick, but the storefront's been doing well enough that it's kind of picking up, picking up the slack from us not being able to do the, the reptile shows right now. Okay, perfect, perfect. Just want to let everybody know the phone number. Don't forget, if you have a question as we go on here, for heaven's sakes, please call 529-8826. Long distance is 506-529-8826 or uh, real long distance. If you're in Ontario, across Canada, 855-529-8826. Doug Harper, exotic animal trainer? Rescue, rehabilitator, and rehomer is what I said. Rescue. The three R's. Okay, okay, okay. He'll come back. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Rocky. Yeah, he's my... Now, tell us a little bit about Rocky. Rocky? Well, I, I can tell everybody this. I want, Rocky never leaves his side. Rocky stays right there. Yeah, he's pretty well glued to me all the time down the store. He's he's one of the most popular ones at the store. He goes to work with me every day. And uh, we had a, a great lady in the community. She uh, brought him to me to kind of get him friendlier with her. And over the time, he bonded with me. And she took him back. And she had, had some health issues, so she didn't want him to go to just anybody. So I purchased him off, off of her. And she comes and visits him every now and then. And uh, he's my best buddy now. He goes pretty well everywhere with me. Well... <laughs> He has, what is Rocky? He is a 21 year old African gray. He's 21 years old. Yeah, yeah. they can live about 45 to 60, depending on how good a care so they get. So Rocky's gonna live to 45 or 60 years yeah, old. Yeah, he'll probably outlive me. My daughter will have to inherit him. We also, we have two of these guys. We have another one at home. His name's Jake. He, uh, he actually has a, a form of PTSD. He was attacked by a dog when he was about five years old, uh, previous home and one of his wings ripped off and three toes. And he plucks his feathers due to anxiety and stress, but he's, they get along great. He's been great for him as well to uh, kind of rehabilitate them, the two pairs. And yeah, we have the, the two of these guys, they're great. And they have the same brain intellect as a five-year-old child. So he's, he's smarter than most of my friends, Aaron included over there. He has the, the brain of a five-year-old? Yeah, they have the same learning capability and brain capacity as a five-year-old child, yeah. He can understand and comprehend. Is he understanding us as we talk? It like, depends on what I say. They say there's about 2,500 different words and phrases that they can actually comprehend and understand. Like he'll certain things when he wants something, he'll say what he wants. If so, he 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 talks to you. Oh yeah, he talks, and he's smart enough that he only talks really when he wants attention. Like if you leave the room or you're not standing there. But if you're standing there with him, he's happy, he's content, and he doesn't. Have What's no he need. say? Uh, he says a lot of things. Just but hello, let me out. Uh, <laughs> He'll call me stupid every now and then to be a smart aleck. There but, you go. But it's whatever he's really picked up from people around him. Like he'll talk in my voice. He'll talk in my wife's voice. He'll talk in my daughter's voice, his old owner's voice. So whatever kind of tone he hears, he can, he can repeat it. Really? Yeah. And it, it can be pretty, we learn we don't answer the phone now unless we hear four or five consistent rings because it's, it's him. <laughs> what is him was, his, making, fun, making the phone call? Oh making, yeah, making... yeah. When I first opened the store and I had him, he, uh, we, I don't know how many times I kind of tossed my phone aside mad because I thought people were hanging up on me when I picked it up and it wasn't. It was just him ringing the phone himself and <laughs> making me look like an idiot like he enjoys to. <laughs> I, I want to remind our Facebook friends to remember, you can, you can send us, if you have a question for Doug and or for Rocky, uh, just, uh, uh, just Facebook us, They'll ask us what, it, what the question is. Any question and at all. we get some weird questions, so any questions not for really going to be. For example. Oh God, I get people that honestly think I sleep in the same bed as my snakes or ask me if uh, I'm not going to ask you that. Ask me if I Speaking feed of that, the dumbest is, things to them, my cats, my dogs, or... This is, this is interesting as you was telling me. Listen to this. Rocky thinks you're his mate. Yes, unfortunately he does and that's the way they do. They're like, they bond with one, 
one mate their whole life. And if he's basically with me with no female or other male companion, he <laughs> will bond with me and <laughs> thinks I'm his mate. That's why he never leaves my shoulder. He never stops looking at you. I've walked outside a few times with him on my shoulder, forgot about him and him not, he don't fly away. And he, like I said, gonna he can, ask you that. He he's fully, fly. his wings aren't clipped. He can fly free as can be. We don't believe in clipping. I've got a few other birds. We don't clip their wings. We let them just, and he's never caged. He's, I have cages at my home, but he's never in them. He's just free range, can fly around all he wants. And then at night he goes, goes in his cage for the night. Really? Now, oh yeah. Now, you, I, see, you, I, I know you have a cage for him, yep. okay? When you come down here tonight, is he in the cage? Or he's he... in a travel cage, yeah. But usually, like, if I don't have all the animals in the car, he's just the cage open, and he usually sits on the steering wheel on my shoulder. And that's where he's most active. He loves car rides and listening to music in the car. He does? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll start dancing across the dash. We've got some good videos on our Facebook page of him. He's listening to every word you're saying. Oh, yeah. And he does. He, he, he pays attention. What does he eat? Pretty well anything you put in front of him, but he's only really supposed to eat pellet form of seeds and stuff like that. But fresh veggies, fruits, stuff like that is really good for him. But anything, when we sit down at supper, he's right there flying down, trying to steal right off our plates. Every... You're kidding. Oh, no. My daughter kind of, he's worse than the dogs, and he likes to feed the dogs. He'll take food off the plate and feed the dogs on the floor. He's, he's quite entertaining. There's never, never really a dull moment. In, in what do the dogs think of him? They're good. I've, I've made my dogs realize that anything that's in my home is not prey. The, my, my, we have a puppy that's about a year old that they're best friends. They play, they go on like fools. They're, yeah. uh, but we never, we never leave them alone or anything like that. Right. But when yeah. we're at home, they're, all our animals are mingled. My cats don't bother them because he could really take a chunk out of my cat if he wanted to. So the cats have learned the hard way a couple of times. We, we, we have a question on Facebook and, they, and they, he'll, uh, how do, he, he, he will, you said this, now, just to clear, he will play tricks with ringing of the phone. He'll, oh yes, yes, he he'll will. He'll make the sound of the phone ring. Before we were coming down packing up, he was sitting out in the storefront just ringing away and it's his way of trying to get attention to get me to come back. Anything he does like that is to draw me in because <laughs> I'm out of the room and he wants me to come back in so he can sit on my shoulder. Okay. I'm a, I might as well get a wooden leg and a parrot eye because, yeah, a I, was because say. He, I look like a parrot or a pirate. Where does he sleep at night? He sometimes, most time it's in his cage, but sometimes I've got a perch mounted beside the bed. Sometimes he'll come down, I'll wake up and he'll be staring me right in the face or my other one will. I'll wake up in the middle of the night and they'll be on my pillow wanting their head rubbed and it's, <laughs> he'll actually wake up in the morning and he's a God bless because my, uh, he won't want my wife anywhere near me in the mornings. He'll come up on my pillow and sit on my well, pillow and fluff all Well, that's because you're his mate, yep. for heaven's sakes. Yeah, and he's not a big fan of my wife. He's just starting to warm up to my wife. He's he's pulled her eye, eyebrow out a couple of times. And well, he doesn't like your wife. No, he's he's protective of me, right? So he he's takes jealous. her kind of as a threat. So he, he's uh, jealous of your wife. He'll make her think he's her buddy, and then he'll grab her by the eyelid and pull it out to about here or her lip. And just when he she thinks he's trustworthy, he'll uh, <laughs> he'll fool her. <laughs> oh. But okay, we, okay, all right. So, uh, Aaron's over there. What do, you want to start bringing some over? I'll, I'll tuck Rocky in the cage and we'll bring a, a different one over. Come on, bud. Okay. Up, up. Good oh boy. Let's go in your cage for a minute. Okay, we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to put Rocky away because I don't know what. Aaron's we don't, we don't mingle with. Rocky with snakes. You don't mingle Rocky with snakes? No, because some of Rocky's my snakes... Rocky's a man after my own heart. Because <laughs> some of my snakes, he's, he's big enough to be food for some of them. He's, he would be food for some oh, of them. Oh, yes. Yeah, my cash could easily make a snack out of him if he wanted. Oh, Florence. Florence is our camera person. These are one of my favorites. My bet. These are New Caledonian crested geckos. These are like the perfect little starter pet for kids. They're not a high-maintenance lizard at all. They're uh, pretty simple. They don't require like high heat or anything. Room temperature, 75 to 80 degrees is great for these Wh guys. What are they? Uh, New Caledonian crested geckos. They only come from one island in the world. Originally, now they're invasive in a lot of places, but it's a little island off of Australia, New how, Caledonia. How, how, did, how did you get them? Where, these guys, are just these are captive bred. These aren't wild. I do have a couple of wild caught animals, but these guys are captive bred. I've bred this guy out myself, and this guy actually came from a good buddy of mine up uh, up in the city that had to go away um, for a while and he surrendered them to me to take care of them and uh, left them with me. How old How old would those guys this be? This guy would be probably about eight now and this one is going on five. And I breed these guys, I've got several, I've got probably 14 of these guys and what, 13 babies I've hatched out this year. Neat thing about these guys too is, 
I have another one over there. If you can find them, Aaron, when these guys get the least bit scared, they drop their tails. Their tails fall off. His tails fall off? Oh, you mean it falls off? Yeah, it falls right off. I've actually got one over there. If Aaron can find her, she's probably in that one, Aaron, right there. That one's getting away on you. And uh, these guys live about 30 years. Holy If you take Lord. good care of them. Yeah, and that's why a lot of these, why the, a lot of these were surrendered is because people, the novelty wears off after a few weeks or a couple of years. They don't realize that most reptiles uh, are 20, you still got years. one crawling up your arm over Oh there. yeah, I'm used to. And this is one here, like I was saying, that has had the tail dropped. If you look, her tail's dropped off. Yeah. And they call them a frog butt once that happens. It never goes back on these guys. Why, why would their tail fall? Defense mechanism. So whatever's chasing them that scared it or prey, they'll eat the tail instead of them because the tail will keep wiggling like a worm for about 10 minutes. You got he's, he's still crawling up oh, yeah. that. Yeah, and uh, so they'll eat. I've actually watched when his tail fell off, it was because I opened his cage and it spooked him. He came back around 10 minutes later and ate his own tail. Pretty gross, eh? They eat their skin when they shed, they eat their own skin. These guys don't have any eyelids either. When they want to blink, they got to lick their eyeballs. <laughs> uh, you know, would, would they be a good Christmas present? No, no, that I don't believe no. in. I'm not one per se you. that believes in animals as presents. No, I believe good for you. The same theory: you wouldn't adopt a child for a present. Yeah, I will say if somebody plans way ahead, three months before Christmas, and the kid knows about it, no problem. But I don't believe in surprising somebody with a pet uneducated. We make sure people are well educated before they get one of our animals. We're not just like a regular pet store that you can walk in and just buy an animal. At our store, we get a lot of people that get mad about it, but there's an adoption contract. A, they get a sign stating they'll never sell, rehome, or breed the animal. If they don't want it, it has to come back to us. It prevents, because the out of the 200 animals I have, about 150 of them are surrenders. Like, prime example, after Easter, we always get 30 to 40 rabbits and guinea pigs dropped off to our store that people no longer want because they got them for an Easter present, and now the parents don't want to take care of them when the so, novelty so, wears off. So, if it, this is a Facebook question, so some of the kids are saying, Oh, I'd love to have one of those. How old would, would you have to be? These guys, I don't recommend. With parental help, I say anybody over the age of probably seven or eight could take care of these. But without parental help, I don't let any anybody under the age of 12 or 13 adopt any of the animals. But if the parents want to want to put basically their their liability at hand on my contract, if the kid's not taking care of it, their name's on the contract, I can hold them just as responsible as the kids in the care, right? You're really conscious about about yes my animals will not i've taken animals back from people that weren't taking care of them properly and it's it's and i and a lot of them aren't i'm never mad at them i i understand things don't work out with people life changes it's it's the ones that bring them back to me and know that that's the proper thing to do sorry but if you had one of those for a pet okay what do you do? Cuddle up to the? What would you? Well, these a lot I'm of people. Sorry. There's a lot of reptiles that aren't so social, but there's a lot that do bond. Like I've got water dragons over there that bond with them with me. <laughs> I've got actually a, a about a what five and a half foot uh, um, tegu that bonds with with me. He knows his name. He comes just like a dog. I didn't bring him tonight because he's so big. He'd be about from here to the end of that table. Oh, gee. And he's actually one I'm looking after for somebody. I do sittings this guy had to go away to ottawa to work for a couple of years so he's paying me to look after his 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 lizard while he's gone so he can have him it's hard for people to find a reptile sitter in our province right it's like I when the you. power you. goes out around the province i always offer people from all over new brunswick if they have a reptile animal that needs to stay warm to get it to our store we do a lot of a lot of sitting well, for speak, people uh, speaking of that uh what it's cold out Yep. You had to bring them down here to the studio. Yep. So I got a vehicle that I got to let get nice and warm that I, when I do long shows, I've got heat pads, heat blankets that I put under them, keep them warm, heated cages. Like I've got a lot of money invested in traveling because like I said, we've done over 400 shows around the province. That, you go around the province. Yeah. And it's usually every weekend. We've been for eight months, been kind of having a break because we don't want to jeopardize with the virus. But usually every weekend, three shows a weekend, I'm traveling around the province doing, mm -hmm. doing shows. That's amazing. And okay. I'll tell you what. Let's go for a break. Yep. All right. I'll try to catch my breath. <laughs> okay. Get brave enough uh, for that big snake that's over yeah, there. Yeah. No. 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 no let's, let's just let's go easy into this. Okay. Yeah. We're gonna go for a break. While we're gone, five two nine eight eight two six five zero oh, six five two nine eight eight two six long distance or eight five five eight eight two six. Give us a call right here at the jungle. We're we're here. We'll be right back. 
it only took a few days for our world to change in March 2020. Suddenly, New Brunswickers faced transportation issues to access basic needs like safe food, medical care, and prescriptions, or getting to work. In a matter of days, organizations and volunteers stepped up to develop or enhance community transportation services across New Brunswick. They're working on the ground in their own communities safely. If you need a ride for your life's essentials, contact your community transportation service. They are there to help. And if you're passionate about making a difference in your community, become a volunteer driver today. Since 1938, we've been at the forefront of wetland conservation in Canada. Wetlands that are critical for our water supply, our wildlife, and our environment. They are critical for all of us. By working to conserve wetlands, we're working to protect our water, our wildlife, and you. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. I gotta tell you, Aaron's getting ready to bring out another guest. Our camera person is Florence, and, and she's watching Aaron, and she says, oh my lord, isn't he adorable? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, well, what, Aaron, could you bring adorable over, please? <laughs> Holy crap. Right and these are just my tiny, my tiny Yeah, pieces. yeah. 529-8826. This is Minnie. I'm trying to get my mind off this. 529-8826, 506-529-8826, or 855-529-8826, or on Facebook. What in the world? Okay, Doug. Okay, this, now. This is about an eight-year-old um, female, annuary motley corn snake. What makes it that, besides just being a normal corn snake, when I say annuary motley, that just means the colors. She's the gray, and then so the, this is a she. Yep, and then how the do belly. you know if it's a he or she? And I don't really want to know. Uh, you have to do what's called probing, or you can do a pop. It's where you just hold on here. I don't she's old to enough doing, and you yeah, pop, yeah. and either a happy thing comes out or the, uh, the the female genitals. So is she friendly? Yes, yeah, great. These guys are like one of the most social, social, social. Yeah, social snakes you can get. These are what I call a starter, a starter snake for kids, and we actually breed these guys. <laughs> and in this little container, is one of her babies from this year. This one is only about uh, three months old. Isn't she sweet? We bred, I had uh, 45 of these this year. 45? Yep. I in the house? In, yeah, down at my store, yep. Yeah. Oh, at the store? Yep. And uh, we've got 21 left that are still up for adoption. So anybody looking for a nice baby corn snake, we definitely have these available. I imagine available a lot of people are looking for a nice baby corn snake. You'd be, you'd be surprised, and a lot of people don't know. Like, that's one of the reasons why I opened, because- Aaron, you work with this stuff every day? When he does my shows, yeah. But uh, but yeah, we, we you opened. You ever been bit? Oh yes, I've been bit by, <laughs> and I, I tell people anytime I have been bit, it's been my own mistake. During feeding or not washing properly after I handle my bird and then going in their cages. It's, I tell people do as I say, not as I do. Because having two, 200 reptiles and animals, there's sometimes some steps I have to skip that I tell people to necessarily take because I'm not a zoo, I don't have 20 employees to help me. I have, at my store working, just me and another employee. And then I have people like Aaron that help me out when I do my travel shows, but fire's taking care of those 200 animals, it's me, my daughter, yeah. and one employee. All right. Along with hard time taking care of my hire, storefront. Do you have a hard time hiring people? Not really, actually I have a lot of people that love to, but, to come, but they don't understand what it takes to work at a, a pet store. Like, 
they think it's just working at a counter and it's not like I expect my my employees to be educated enough that they can answer any question properly for any animal that somebody comes in because that's our goal that's why I open because I'm not I never badmouth any pet store per se but a lot of pet stores you go in in the province it's, it's any 15 year old kid that can go to work there and they give wrong information to people that when they buy animals and then that animal ends up in my hands sick or dying because some kid that didn't know nothing about the reptile yeah. tried to educate him lie their way through a sale. Wow. And a okay. lot of stores will get commissions when they sell animals and stuff like that and I don't believe in making a profitable gain off yeah. of a living creature. You don't creature. care if I shimmy and shake. No, shimmy. I'm used to it buddy. I used to be one of them as well. Like I have a grandmother, she's oh. passed away, God love her, but her, she, her life was ruined for snakes her brothers held her down and put garter snakes in her shirt when she was a kid i'd be one of those and she had a legit fear we couldn't talk about them we couldn't do anything like, i know some them. people that that probably had to turn have to turn their head when they're you know like if you know. if my grandma was still alive she wouldn't drive down the front street knowing i was there with these snakes are that's you serious how, yeah that's how bad her fear was and that's why i love to do my shows and educate people that this guy is just as good as a pet as a dog or a cat to some people. Oh, sure it would be. Yeah. And people get judged. My wife likes to cuddle with our with her cat. There you go, honey. It drives me cuddle daddy away. when, say, if I go for a walk and I take a snake with me, people will look at me different <laughs> than the guy that's Florence. walking down the road with their with their dog, right? And in my eyes, there's okay. no different than a pet owner of one okay. of these. The, the, the brave guys in there are saying, okay, bring out another one. All right, so Aaron has. Here comes, oh, Lord love One of dog. my favorites. Oh, I bet he is one of your favorites. Yeah. This is Marley. He now is about there. a 10 year old Chinese water dragon. I have two of them, my females over there as well. This guy actually, this is a prime example of what some Ooh. people do with me. They uh, find He's me. He's not coming over here, Doug. He, uh, the girl had to go away to university and her- uh, Doug, here he comes. <laughs> her mom was taking care of her and it was a little bit too much for her. So they found me. Where's he from? He's from up in Moncton, he came but, from. But where's he originally from? These guys come from China, Asia, Vietnam, places like that over in uh, Asia. And like I said, they're pretty neat. They're a really docile social creature. Cool little question for you is how many eyes do you see on him? How many? I see two, one on each side. These guys actually have a uh, third eye on the top of their head that I detects UV, UVB light. It's actually uh, so when a predator flies over them and casts a shadow over that third optical eye on the head, that nerve ending, it tells them whether to fight or flight, right? Because the amount of time it takes one of these guys to look up in the wild, a bird's gonna grab them. So That's they, what'll eat him. Yeah, oh yeah, birds, anything bigger than him. He's a, he's a could, food item for could, snakes, birds. Is he, is he one of those ones that can change color? No, he can kind of change his green to a darker or lighter, but no, he's not a color changing lizard. And, and even the ones peop you see on TV that people like chameleons that they think can change whatever color, whatever they touch, it, it doesn't work like that. That's all TV magic. They have certain colors that they can change. It's not like they can change millions of different colors. Each, each reptile kind of has a, a tone they'll change like the, uh, the chameleons. And there's so many different breeds of them that can change so many different colors. Facebook question. Yes. What's he eat? Anything you put in front of them. I bet. <laughs> now this guy prefers. I bet. They prefer mealworms. Where's Rocky? Superworms. He's down there making noise in his cage. Okay. No, well, I don't want him. Does it, now, now, guy, does he have a name? This guy. This guy. This is Marley. 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 So yeah. Uh, all, all of them, all have. All of them have names. Names. Yeah. They all have names. And then when the, my conservation officers come to do my inspections, they're kind of blown away that instead of naming off just species, I name them off by their names. I know every one of my animal's names. I have a thing with my volunteers that come to my store. We have uh, every day a kid that comes down from middle school that's either been bullied, picked on, or struggling that comes and volunteers at our store. And uh, I do challenges with them. I'll let them blindfold me and they can pick any animal out of my 200 animals, put it in my hand, and within 30 seconds, I can tell you the animal and the name of the animal that I'm holding because every one of these guys have a personality. Right. And you know it. You know it by holding them. So really? yeah, we'll uh, we'll put Marley back and we'll grab a uh, another cute little fellow to bring out. Okay. But, but Marley, okay. yeah, and his is, is, Rock, is, is Rocky okay down? Oh there? yeah, well, Rocky's down there just making noise in his his travel cage. Oh Lord, love and die. So what we have here is one of my favorites. She's actually in the process of shedding her skin, so she's kind of got a blue tint to her. Her name is Medusa. Well, certainly. <laughs> she is a, what a, else a would you call her? pretty rare one to see around here. She is a Brazilian oh, rainbow Lord. boa. What? I've always wanted one of these guys grow, uh, in my career, and yeah. luckily uh, a young fella up in 
the city had her and he wasn't well educated on them and he reached in her tank after he fed her and he got bit. What she eat? Rats. They usually eat rats, rat rodents that are the same size as she the biggest She eats a rat? Part. Yep. Yep. Biggest size of her body. That's I've how you judge. I've gone into the superstore many times and I've never seen the section where they have rats. Where do you get a rat? <laughs> I actually buy them. I have a company out of Nova Scotia. I'll Are give them a, a shout out. East Coast Exotics. They uh, they do all my deliveries for all my bugs, all my uh, rodents, <laughs> and uh, uh, I actually do breed my own as well. I have a rat colony of about. Uh, oh, you breed your own rats? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, I have. I actually I'm sell never them as going pets. Into your house. I actually sell them as pets as well. But we do have a, a colony because it's it's such an expense to feed these guys right now, especially without doing my shows. I spend about fifteen hundred a month to feed all the animals I have. So if I raise my own food. Um, it's, it's a lot cheaper to keep you guys and it allows me to help well, a lot of other animals. What's the biggest thing that she, rats are the big, you know, biggest rats. thing she'll eat. Yeah. Like I said, anything that's the si biggest part of her body, she can eat quail, rats, you name it. So yeah. yeah. And how often does her, she, she eats her every, rat? every she, two weeks, every the two big, weeks. Yeah. The bigger the feeding, the less often she has like my big snakes that are about nine feet. They'll eat up. They're a, not here. No, they're, they're in Good. shed and I don't bring my handle, my big snakes when they're in shed. I've never been bit, but I take many precautions as I can. This girl, she's great. Where do you great. keep them in the house? I don't have any in my house anymore. They're all in my store. Oh, my, okay. Down okay. at the uh, Harper's Exotics and Pet Supply. Right. We have a reptile room out back of the store, so we have no snakes, just so everybody on TV, like, a lot of people have been scared to come in because they think I have snakes in the storefront, and we don't. My wife goes in. We don't carry any reptile or any slithery Lord, animals out front that may scare love. people. We have a lot of rep or, uh, reptiles out front, but just turtles lizards and birds and stuff but nothing like this that because I, I respect people that are scared of them i never want to push an animal upon somebody who has is, a fear. is he is he poisonous no no the only poisonous animals i have are my tarantulas your tarantulas yeah yeah i have three tarantulas two of them are they're home yeah good yeah my, my metallic blues are ranked uh, one of the most potentest venoms and tarantulas in the world and you got one at home i've got two you got, yeah. Do you ever have anybody drop in the house? or, the, or, or Actually, the, when I used to be based out of my house, when all this was in my house, we used to have people. That's one of the reasons why I opened up my store in my reptile room, because especially at Halloween, people would want to come to an open house. We'd do walkthroughs for the kids all the time at the house, and just due to insurance reasons, we wanted to, uh, we wanted to do it legally and legitly, so we, we opened the reptile room and the, uh, the pet supplies side of things. And that's the other part I'd like to do a little talking about is, is our... Uh, how a lot of people think we're just the reptile, and we're not. We have a full pet supply store. We're, we, we're equivalent to any of your big chain pet stores in the city, but without being a big chain. Exactly. We carry uh, a lot of Canada, or three of Canada's top brands of dog food, all your small animal supplies. And you're the only one in town. You're the yes, only pet Yes, and that's why we open, because I've got 200 animals. I got tired of driving to St. John every week and spending money in the community that I didn't need to, right? They say just us alone has kept about 2.5 million more in our community by people not traveling to the city. Because I was one of them. I go to the city to buy reptile supplies. Then I go out for supper. Then I go for groceries. That's money I could have been spending in my own community. So especially with the virus, our, uh, our clientele's picked up Doug, big time. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why would you want... Matilda, why? Because it, I, I, in my eyes, an animal's an animal. I don't pass... But yeah, but they're no not legs. all slimy. But slimy. they're not. That's another misconception. You think she's slimy? Uh, I'll take your Reptiles word. aren't slimy. I'll amphibians are slimy. She's just no different than holding a piece of leather. And like I said, if you've got yeah. an allergy, which I do have allergies, these yeah. guys are great because there's no no. I think allergy. I'm allergic to snakes. Yeah, you go ahead. Just gonna, touch no, your tail. Not, Come no, on. No. I, <laughs> I knew you were going to do that. Okay. All right. Aaron, would you please come over here? So we're going to do another Matilda switch up. wants to go home. Medusa. 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 Medusa is the queen of snakes. Why do they flick their tongue in and out like that? That's how they smell. A snake That's how smells. They smell. Yep. And if you look at He's these guys, you can see pits. Holy Lord. See those dying. pits on the end of his nose? Those are his heat seeking pits. That's what they see in what infrared. What is that? That's how they find their prey at night. Because what they is have that? eyes. Is this, this is a uh, piebald ball python, a royal python. And when I say piebald, like I said, you'll see the deer, especially down here in St. Andrews. There's a couple of them running around that uh, have the piebald design on. It's just a, a pigment difference that they have white. I thought you, I thought you were going to say he'd eat the deer. No. no. <laughs> One of my big ones might be able to try, but not this little fella. He just eats small rats and, 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 large, and uh, large mice. But yeah, this is uh, Titan. He actually came from a, a great friend of mine named Sean down in uh, PEI that used to run a uh, reptile breeding facility, Next Generation Reptiles. And when they uh, 
they shut down to, uh, he wanted to start a family and try to work on a kid. So when they shut down, they brought me all their animals because they didn't feel comfortable just selling them. And so all their animals they brought up to my facility. And this was one of the ones he surprised me with for a birthday present because this is a, a really rare. Some ball pythons are only worth a, a few hundred bucks and depending on color and stuff, these guys can be up in the thousands. Is he that. poisonous? No, God, no. None of my snakes are poisonous. Except the, the, the spiders. Right? You really, you can't, there's no legal snake, legal poisonous snakes in our, in our do, province. Do you, do you have to have a, a special license to have these no, guys? No, in our province, not to, <coughs> I have an SB, or I have a pet establishment license. That, that gives me the uh, legal right to sell animals if I want to. But as far as rescuing, no, you don't have to. But when I first started out, I did have, uh, I had to be inspected because I had neighbors that didn't like my snakes, and somebody called the no. yeah, somebody called the SPCA, and they came to my house one day and put yeah. a notice on my door saying that they had a report that my animals weren't safely kept, and I had un unsafe kept snakes. So I allowed them to He's come in. his feet over here. <laughs> so I allowed them to come in and look around, and by the time they left, they they want. They were saying that uh, I should become an SPCA officer, that my animals were in better care than any pet store they had seen. And uh, it kind of shut up my neighbors that just assumed I was a guy with snakes roaming around his house. But as so, you can see, if you ever come to my store, my animals are, are better kept than some zoos you see. I bet. Wait, now, if she has babies, does she lay eggs? Or yeah, what? and it all depends. Uh, if uh, the snake, the way it generally goes, if they come from an environment that's warm enough to incubate the eggs, they lay eggs. But if they're not from an environment that's not warm enough for the eggs to incubate, they hold the eggs. Ball pythons lay eggs. My big boa, when she had uh, babies not last year or the year before, she had 57. They're all alive. They come out in their own placenta, not an egg. The egg kind of is already inside the, in the snake throughout the gestation period, and then it kind of turns into a placenta, and they, they come out live, ready to go. Well, these guys, their eggs have to stay, or they have to stay in their eggs for about 50, 59 days. In, in your store? Yep. You do have a reptile room. Yeah, it's the reason back. I'm asking. The reason because if there's some kids watching tonight, they're going to say, "Man, I want to go and touch one of those." Yeah, yeah. You go. You just we're, go to your store. We're right? hoping to open that back up in the new year. It's been okay. closed because the second we open that up, we come entertainment side, and everybody that enters the store has to leave name, number, and a lot of my clients don't want to do that just to buy dog food, right? Oh, okay. So yeah. we we've closed down the reptile room side of it until probably after the new year. But yeah, we usually have a reptile room. It's five dollars a person to come in. Okay. You get a tour of the whole room, and then you get to pick an animal of your choice and hold them for a few minutes. That'd be neat. And, and, we, and we do have a lot of people that come in, like, for therapy. Like, this, it's just their safe spot. We have a lot of clients that have PTSD. For therapy? Yeah. We have, I have several clients that have PTSD that literally just come down to sit in that room and hold an animal that it helps their PTSD. I have my, my two dogs are always down there, and I have people that specifically come down to pet them dogs. Actually, a few few months ago, one of my dogs ripped a ligament in their leg, and it was actually an article on my wall when you came in that all my clients stepped up and paid for her $2,500 surgery for us. Within 24 hours, they donated all the money to us to, well, to get my dog fixed. Okay, Aaron, what do you got? I hope it's a little kitty cat or something. <laughs> this is a cool little guy. This is Leo. Oh, this is Leo. Worst thing he'll do is poop well, on you. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. He is a sedan-plated lizard. Okay. He's another one that came up from uh, Next Generation Reptiles when they when they shut down. He's been one of my favorites. He's and, one of the kids' favorites. Now, where's he from? These guys come from Zimbabwe, Sudan. Uh, they can be found in Iraq. They're a, uh, a pretty durable animal. If you feel him, he's really plated. They're one of the most plated lizards. He's got, what, three different types of skins on him. You'll see his bellies are really coarse hard because they live in the sand. Is, is and he it's really mad? Hot. Nope. If, if a reptile's mad, you know it. He's, he's comfortable you know? enough with me. He'll, they'll hiss, they'll bite, they'll, they'll go on. He, he has no threat with me whatsoever. He's been, a, he's been a good little guy. He's a favorite with all the kids. And, 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 and what does he eat? Him? Mealworms, superworms, crickets, he loves. Uh, I've got a lot of friends that do like uh, butchering deers and stuff like that that do uh, uh, butcher work. And when they bring me scraps, hamburger, old hamburger, anything he likes like hamburger. that. Yeah. Just when you feed them stuff like that that doesn't have bones and stuff like that, you've got to put uh, uh, vitamins and calcium and stuff like that in with it to, to give them the proper, because they're meant to eat bones. They're meant to eat the whole part of the animal with, with all their organs and stuff to get all the, the vitamins they need. But his main diet consists of bugs. 
Yes, a sir. lot of bugs. A lot of bugs. A lot of bugs. Where do you get the bugs? I had a, a company out of Nova Scotia, East Coast Exotics. Every every two weeks, they they make a delivery up here, and that's where I buy my animals and or my bugs in wholesale and my frozen rats and feeders. There's a market for everything, and somebody's <laughs> got to do it, right? Oh, definitely so. I'm glad you're doing this. And part. that's as I said, we didn't have a market for healthy pet products in this area without driving 200 kilometers there and back. So that's why that's why I opened the the store. Remember the phone number. If you want to call and ask Doug a question, please do, 529-8826. And nothing's too weird. I've been asked everything. Yeah, did you hear that? Nothing's too weird. 506-529-8826 <laughs> or really long distance. If you're in Toronto and you don't have any of these walking down the street, 855-529-8826. What we're going to do, we're going to take a break. Man, where's the time going? Oh, geez. We're going to take a break, and uh, we'll be back right after this with more guests. Listen, you're my friend. I noticed you haven't really been yourself recently. Yeah, I feel like something's up. How are you? Are you okay? Is there anything you want to talk about? I just want to know how you're feeling. And listen, even if you don't know what to say, I'm here to talk. No matter what you're going through, I just want you to know I'm here. I've got your back. When you want to talk, I'm here. You fill up my senses Like a sleepy blue ocean You fill up my senses Come fill me again Okay, we're back with the guests. The guests keep getting scarier and scarier and scarier here. Uh, I think I'm on this uh, <laughs> Doug Harper. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Doug, Doug handles, raises, takes care of exotic animals. And uh, our next guest, every time I see Aaron come close, I know something's gonna happen. And, here comes Aaron. Yeah, here He's we got go. My, my baby boy with him. He's got your baby boy with him. Oh, yeah. This is the guy that started it all. And I'm not going to lie, when he first came to me, I was scared to death of him. It's sort a of like a little something that I, I am right now. Now, people never know. It was one of my biggest fears growing what up is he? With, with snakes. He is a common red tailed boa, just a natural. He's a boa constrictor. Yep. And he's full grown. I've had him almost 10 years now. He was Doug, why is he doing that? Where is he going? He's just trying to get up to me. He knows me. Like I say, people say, oh, my snake loves me. No snake loves you. They don't have the brain to love. But he knows me as a safe spot. He knows me not as a companion, but as some, someone that doesn't hurt him, that he knows he can he can come up around and hang out without knowing where he's about getting hurt. Is the bow the one that strangled you to death? 
<laughs> it's a kind of a big myth. Any any snake is capable. I'm just saying that because he's going around your neck. No, buddy. he he he's not going to attempt to eat or kill anything that he knows is too big for him. But any prey item that is a natural prey item for him is a risk for them to grab coil. But me as himself, no, he'd never he'd never attempt to hurt me or anything unless I physically hurt him. He might give me. If I was to say accidentally hit him on the head, he might give me a strike as in to say, hey, bug off. But Is he, he poisonous? No. God oh, no. He'll just strangle you to death. He's got a lot of a lot Are of these teeth. ones that eat cows? <laughs> no, you're thinking of ones like more like an anaconda or something okay. like this. Oh, yeah. A snake yeah. usually doesn't eat anything big around in their body. So if what does he eat? He eats, uh, he, the biggest thing he's eaten is rabbits. He can eat uh, small. A rabbit? Yep, he's eaten a rabbit once, twice, small rabbits. Nothing alive we don't feed our animals live we buy our animals Thank they're goodness. frozen and for our bigger snakes they eat chickens and rabbits but we have farmers that when they slaughter their their old uh, commercial hens or chickens they'll give us a call and donate them to us instead of us having to find food we have a lot of butchers that will donate their meat to us to try to help us out old vegetables stuff like that gets donated to us as well to, to help our lizards and stuff what's his name his name is cash cash Na yep named after my wife's favorite thing He's, wait a second now. He's named after your wife's favorite thing. Cash, yeah. Uh, what's Johnny Cash? Is that her favorite? What's her favorite? <laughs> no, cash, cash money. Oh, cash, cash money. money. But no, the real story, his name is, uh, the old owner had a, had a cat named Tango, and they named him Cash after the old uh, Patrick Swayze movie. A lot of people uh, probably, uh, he's old. Are there... Okay, so the other people had a cat. Yep, yep. You're going to tell me he ate the cat. No, nope, no, nope. he didn't eat the cat. He's not, He's nothing but rodents. You got to tell him that we have to keep our six feet different. Yeah, oh yeah, he's here. he's hired for the six foot dance, yeah, distancing. Yeah, let's let's you know. I've let's... been on them, but that's one of the main reasons why we don't do our shows because it's pretty well impossible now to do a, a reptile show with uh, the six foot distant distancing. Because yeah. I've got to whenever one of, somebody's holding one of these, I'm right there with them. And you ever you ever put a leash on them and take them for a slither <laughs> around the block? I've, I've taken them for walks, but it's not long. No, you have not. Yeah, I, I honestly... Outside? Yeah, I've, I, there's no difference in me going for a walk with my snake in my eyes than people going for a walk with their dog. And it helps... Dog, I hate to tell you, there is a little difference. In, in personally, in, in opinions, but to Holy somebody that's a snake God. owner, you got to think, there's people out there that are just as scared of cats and dogs as you are the snake. So, no, there isn't. Oh, yes, there is. I have people that come into my store that will not come into my store if my dog's out front that are terrified of the dog, but not scared of the snakes. You're and it's, kidding. Yeah, and it's all to each their own. And I respect any fear that anybody has because they just, they, they, I call the lack of education on the animal. Once you're properly educated on them and realize the dangers of them, they're, they're just as cool as any other creature, right? And they demand, they, they deserve any kind of good life just like my dog and my cat does. No, really, my holy cow, oh, <laughs> good Lord. Okay. You need one. We'll, we'll make is sure there, we get you one adopted here. I yeah. got 20 corn snakes. Is that, there a certain size that you can go up to? Is yeah, in our up? province, the law is it kind of goes by species and size. There's kind of a loophole. Any boa is legal in our province, but they say anything over nine feet is illegal. But I have a boa that's nine and a half feet, but she's perfectly legal because she's what, within the species. What, do you keep them in a cage at home? You do. You yeah, keep, at, at, the sto at the store. Oh, you're yeah. at the store. Yeah, we've got you're never going to have size. to worry about any everybody anybody breaking into your store. Well, you'd be surprised though. There's people out there that would love to have this guy that would that would. How much would he be worth? The, this guy. Not a whole lot, it, it, and it's more of a what he's worth sentimental to me. He, he, I would exactly. Call it, he's only worth a few hundred six dollars. Feet. We gotta keep the six but feet. But I wouldn't sell him for a, a million bucks because he's he's my buddy. He's part of my family. All my creatures are, and it's, okay. we uh, do have some we rehome our uh, babies. But your snake's on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. He, he likes yeah. He likes to get up there and get in the way. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's put him back around your neck again, Doc. Uh, He's perfectly, we gotta have him around your neck before we go. No, yeah. we're not. Okay, Aaron, would you please come over? Cash wants to go home. <laughs> Whoa. Do they smell? No, like a lot of people were surprised, especially when I had this all in my home. I've had people come in my home and say, I'm not gonna lie, I expected this to, to smell like animals. And it doesn't, if you take proper care, my animals are all changed every few days. They're spot cleaned for feces. They're washed. If, if you take proper care of animals, no, you're not you going to have wash, a stink. You have to wash him? They have, they, every one of them have a tub in their, in their cage that they'll, they'll sit, soak, clean themselves. And if you take proper care of them, there's no stink. But 
reptiles do have a smell, just like a dog has a smell, just like a cat has a smell. We have a smell. It's just, if you take proper care of them, there's no stink. But yes, they do have a, every, every species has its, its own smell. Facebook question. Yeah. You ever been bit? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, and I'm not going to lie. I've been bit by my biggest snake, but any time I've been bit, it's been my own stupidity. Did you have to go to the hospital? Nope. Never had to go to the hospital. Did you have for... stitches? Nope. I've had to go to the hospital for cat's bites. I've spent the night in the hospital from cat bites, but I've never had to go to the hospital. And I've been bit by a nine and a half foot boa that left 40 teeth marks in my hand, and I had to pick out a couple of teeth. But it was my own stupidity. I leaned into her cage, forgetting my, my uh, parrot was on my shoulder, and my hand smelled like it. I leaned right in front of her, and before I leaned in front of her, I questioned myself. I said, this is probably a stupid move. But I was in a hurry, and I ended up getting bit in the hand over it. But I use it as education for a lot of people. Like, this is, look what happens when you skip steps. Look what happens when, and I've learned. I've learned the hard way that I, I don't do those things now just so that scenario doesn't happen because it, really all it cold. takes is, and I don't publicize it. Like, I, I never publicize when I get bit because it just puts that scare factor out there, right? A lot of people can get bit 10 times a day by their chihuahua and nobody cares, but I get bit once by my snake. I've got a mob that, at my, mob you've got at a my point door. There. That's, you've got a point there. That's, and, that's and, it's right. still, and it drives me batty too in my store because I have two pit bulls as well. And Holy I hear, Lord, I, dying. And they're the biggest, friendliest dogs you could ever imagine. There might be some people that argue with that. And then people will say, they'll come in my store with a, I love all animals, but they'll come in store say with a, a little dog that's barky and bitey and think it's funny but condemn a pit bull if it even growls at them. And it's, it's, it's just the stigma that needs to go away. I think that, that every dog in my eyes is created equal. No, no breeds are worse than Do the others. Do you have some dogs in your store too? Yeah, well, I actually have four dogs. I have a, uh, all rescues. I have a 200 pound Great Dane, two pitties that come up from uh, the South down in Georgia as rescues that were gonna be put down. And then I have uh, a boxer puppy that we just rescued a year ago here that was being sold a little bit too early in our community that a girl picked up and didn't know he was that, that young that we nursed back to, to health and we ended up keeping. So yeah, I've got, I've got four dogs. Four dogs, three cats at the house and- 300 snakes. Nope, no, we have no reptiles at the house anymore. My insurance is all based on the store right now. So any of my reptiles that I, anything I use for shows has to be kept at my store except for like my birds and stuff like that. I was that. gonna say, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Can you bring my buddy back sure, up? Sure, I'll bring Rocky back up. He's down here digging at the cage wanting to come back up. Come on, bud. Rocky wants to come up. Up, up. And come up and say hello there. to everybody. <laughs> There's Rocky. He wants a drink. Hey, Rocky, bud, where you been? Turn around and have a drink. There you go. He's gonna be mad that that's not vodka. <laughs> that's not vodka. Is it good, bud? Is it good? Now he, break? now this is crazy. He missed you. He was going crazy oh, yes. because yeah. you. He goes nuts when we're not around. Is it? Well, he's, he's your a mate. big, he's You're a big mate. lover. Our, uh, yeah. when he comes down, he, he's a lot of people come down just to see him. He's a big fan of uh, my sales reps for my dog food company when they come. Well, I, I've been in your store before, and Rocky's been whistling. And, oh yes, he, we have But how come he's not doing that now? Because well, he's he's contempt. He only talks really to draw people back in. Oh, so he's happy. Yeah. You know why, Doug? The camera's on. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's definitely, when, when we're down, he's almost to the point where he could give dog food advice by listening to me talk every day, because every time I'm talking to a customer, he's, he's right there on my shoulder. We're going to yeah. give him a little pet crayon jersey to, to wear for advertisement. If you whistle at him, will he respond? Not right now, because he's with me, but if he's in a different room and I whistle at him, yeah, he'll respond. When we were getting ready to come and we were in the other room getting these guys ready, he was out just cat calling us, trying to get us to come out and pay attention to yeah, him. Make, and sounding like the phone's ringing. Yeah, he imitates any, way, any pretty well anything he hears. He'll talk in my wife's voice, my voice, my daughter's voice, and it's quite entertaining when he gets going. <laughs> he would be entertaining. Okay, listen, the store. Yes. One of a kind. Yes, that's, that's our, our, our baby now. Like I said, now that we focus with the virus and everything off of the birthday parties, we focus just on our store and uh, we've grown quite a bit in the last three years. Every year we've been open, we've-, we've I know it's very popular. I know, you know, it's-, it's uh, We've grown, that's for sure. Like I said, every year we've doubled our sales from the year before and we're growing till to this day. We, we've got one of the best sales for our dog food company. Our, I gotta give them props, Pet Coran. They've been our biggest supporter since we opened. They actually, you've probably seen in a few weeks ago in the paper, they helped us donate 200 pounds of dog and cat food to the SPCA. We're always, don they're always helping us donate to the food banks. They are like the best dog food company you could imagine. We also have uh, Corey Nutrition on board. They're right here based out of New Brunswick, out of uh, Fredericton. They make uh, uh, Pro Series and North Paw dog food. 
And like I said, we brought them in because they're a nice uh, New Brunswick based company and the Pet Crayon, they make a nice product called Go, Now and Summit. And we've got a good 1600 clients that buy our dog food and cat food here locally, everywhere from La Pro down to Campobello, Deer Island, Grand Manan, I have customers. So we really? Have, yeah, we have a loyalty program that we keep cards at the store that show them that last time I counted, we have a little over a thousand just on that, that brand of dog food that, that buy religious through us. And that's, that's what keeps our door open is the, the quality dog food. And, and you couldn't get it. Like the people don't understand the difference between grocery store food and the food we sell. Like it's just, it's basically the difference between feeding your animals craft dinner, your kids craft dinner and five Kings fresh. I, th I think it was you that told my wife, we have two cats, no snakes <laughs> yet, two cats and uh, love their treats. Yeah. And I think that we were feeding them the treats, and you said, no, that's not good. It was one of the yeah. popular brands, and, and you said, no, that's not. The theory not. is, if you see it on a grocery store shelf, usually, yeah. it's not healthy for your animal. That's like, what these whiskus flavor pouches, stuff like that, are all full of high ash, stuff that causes urinary infections, urinary yeah. blockages, crystals. Yeah. And I've learned the hard way before I opened. I could only buy what I could get locally, and my cat just struggled with urinary blockages, issues like that. and. I, I have at least 30 or 40 clients that my food, they'll tell, tell me right in my face, have saved their animal's life because their hair was falling out from allergies because we sell special needs, allergenic based you as well. You did that with my wife. You and, told her, yeah. That, and, it, and it saved their animal's life. They, they were getting ready to put them down because they thought it was just something they couldn't get. They couldn't drive to the city every week to get the specialty food or they couldn't, they couldn't buy the prescription, afford to buy the prescription diet from a vet. So we, that's why we opened to, to give people those options of good quality pet food without having to go clear to St. John to get it. Right. Because right. if you go to buy a, an $8 bulb for your bearded dragon, you got to spend $40 in gas to go get it. So it, it's- For your bearded dragon. Yeah, for anything. Like we, we got our reptile section, our, our small animal section, our cat section. Can't let the bearded dragon go without it. <laughs> well, and some people, some people that means the world to them, their bearded dragon, right? I have people that, I know that have sunk six, seven thousand dollars in vet bills into their their lizards, just like their dogs or cats, right? So mm -hmm. it's whatever a person bonds with. And I used to be one of those people too that look at people and say, "You're crazy no, for I know. wanting yeah. that." And then I I get them myself and I see the bond you develop with them, and it's like this guy. I, I if somebody told me the option to be homeless or get rid of him, I'd, I I choose. You get take, rid of I'd him. I'd say take my house. You, really? I would say take my house because he's he's. It's part of the family. Even though he drives my wife batty, my wife loves him. My daughter it means the world. Yeah, but to him. he doesn't. He, he, oops, I don't mean to scare you, Rocky. <laughs> but what, what, I would never want him to have to experience relearning because he bonded with me by me, me taking him and switching hands again. Would do you would have other him. birds in the store other than? Yeah, Rocky? I've got two. Uh, do they, does Rocky get along with them? He does, but they they'll pick on him. They're little conyards about that big, and they're they're kind of bullies with him, and we'll let them fly around the store every now and then, and he'll they'll put the run to Rocky. Will they really? Yeah, they're more protective of than. But every now and then he'll uh, he'll fly away from. I hate to tell you this, but Doug, but he's got a crush on you, buddy. Oh, he I know. never takes his eyes. Look, I know. My wife gets, gets show jealous. everybody. I love this. He wants to clean your teeth. Oh yeah, he he usually all they do is Rocky. He might get camera shy. No, he's he's gonna be camera. You see when he does that that yeah. neck thing, that's him regurgitating his seeds. And he's I don't want to him to you. try to clean my teeth right now because he'll probably drop he's a ball full you. of seeds he's in my mouth. He's trying to feed you, yep. bud. Yeah, because he thinks, and that's what they do. They'll feed their mate. And that's a prime example of you know when they bond with you is when they start doing that. And <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll let you two have a minute. <sighs> I've had enough minutes with them, that's for sure. Because this, this is what it is 24-7 at the store. People tease me all the time because he's, as soon as somebody comes in and he's at his cage, he has to come up and land on my shoulder and make sure they don't go near me. And Yeah, it's a Listen. handful. It has been so good to have you on the show. It's been fun. It's been fun. It's, it's been great. I've can't loved say I every wasn't nervous. And, of it. Have a night, Florence. And Rocky, yeah. he needs to wet his whistle too. <laughs> good stuff, bud. <laughs> okay, yeah. listen, that's going to do it for us. Don't forget that Doug is in the store. You're open what? Uh, we're open every day of the week except for Sunday, Monday to Friday. We're open nine to six. And Saturdays we're open five to or uh, nine to five or ten to five, sorry. And uh, yeah, it's right 125 Milltown Boulevard, right across from Vogue Optical. Mm -hmm. 
a lot of people get scared because they see Harper's exotics on the sign and think that we're nothing but snakes. No, but we are. Uh, uh, yeah. We yeah. like I said, you, we'd be no difference walking in our store than one of the big pet stores in the city, except for some so, things we have to order due to spacing wise. And you've got Rocky. Yes, and we've got Rocky. And okay. Like I said we've got quite a few other reptiles out front for the kids to see when they come in. Just no snakes. Okay, we gotta go. Awesome. I want to thank you and all of my guests tonight. I want to thank Aaron too for braving himself to bring those over here. <laughs> Talk to you next time on John Higgins Live. See ya. Bye-bye. Sunbury Shores is a community cultural center that offers a range of arts and craft classes each year in St. Andrews by the Sea. So we have several specialist studios available for rental use, including print, pottery, and metalwork. We also host exhibitions through the year, representing local, regional, national, and international artists. Come visit us at Sunbury Shores to discover new artists, learn new skills, and develop your creativity. Here's your check. You, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got it. No. Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon Al and Alateen can help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit al slash help. Wishing you all the best this holiday. Season's greetings from Garden by the Sea. 100% natural skin care and teas. 217 Water Street, St. Andrews. Wishing you a Christmas that's merry and bright. Happy holidays from the staff and management of the Red Herring Pub and St. Andrews' newest takeout, King Street Pizza. Order at kingstreetpizza.com. Have a safe and relaxing holiday. Season's greetings from Carl Deering and the Sutton Realty Team. Sign up for new listing notifications at carldeering.com. May the magic of the Christmas season fill your home with joy and peace. From the Wee Fabric Shop, shop online and in-store for handmade gifts, fabric, and sewing supplies. Located in Market Square, St. Andrews by the Sea. May your holidays be full of peace, joy, and happiness from Schulten's Convenience Stores, where one stop does it all, with locations in St. John, Fredericton, Hanwell, and Oromocto. New Brunswick Independent Television, CHCO-TV, Channel 26. In a small suburban home that four friends, for them, Christmas was always a time of laughter and cheer. But this year was different. This year, they had all experienced great hardship and tremendous loss. The happy cheer that used to fill their hearts had been replaced with sadness and sorrow. They had always been the best of friends, but lately, they seemed to have become estranged. But just when it seemed that Christmas was lost, a very special gift was about to arrive. A gift that can only be described as Christmas. to get the big one. You think I'm made of money? What are we supposed to do with this? I wanted a real tree. <sighs> Look, Lauren, I already told you. I'm not sleeping in a house with a dried up fire hazard in the living room. Sometimes you just don't think. Well, Donna, I think I'm going to start drinking before I strangle you. Well, that's it. 
it's official. Looks like I will not be going home for Christmas this year. Instead, I'm stuck here with you guys. This is the worst Christmas ever. Zoe? Are you even listening to me? Yes, yes. Stuck here, whatever. We spent Christmas together before, Cindy. Chill out. Yeah, before when things were normal. I just don't feel like myself at all this year. I mean, it's Christmas time. I'm supposed to be feeling happy and excited. Instead, I just feel sad. How do you think I feel? I'm gonna die miserable and alone. You are not. Cindy felt helpless and unable to control the world around her. She loved Christmas, and now it felt like it had been taken away from her. Little did she know that hope was about to arrive. You gonna just sit there or are you gonna go answer the door? Lauren, put Henry down. It could be those punks from off the street. You're insane. They were like 10. You just gonna rough them up a little bit. Okay, that's it. I'm answering it. Put Henry down. Hello? Someone left this on our doorstep. Don't open it. It could be a bomb. Isn't there anyone? It's not a bomb. Probably wart remover from one of Zoe's Tinder dates. I told you not to give out our address to randoms on the internet. You don't make the rules, Donna. This time it was a fluke. How was I supposed to know that the guy had a foot fetish? I'm telling you, it's a bomb. What does the card say? This gift is sealed with Christmas spirit. It will only open when you discover the true meaning of Christmas. Fine. Parties. A full-size tree. Whatever. We're opening it. This is not gonna open. Oh, it's gonna open one way or another. Really on there. 